Welcome to The Weekly, a podcast brought to you by Calvary Bible Church. I'm your host, Jay Ewing. I reside on the Erie campus most often. Hope that you're having a wonderful day out there in the world. So glad you're tuning in once again to The Weekly. Of course, today we got Thomas in the booth with me. Exciting to talk about our new series here at Calvary. But before I do, let me get to some pressing news. I need you to get to calvarybible.com. Click your campus. Find out what's happening in your neck of the woods. We have so many great things. Micah 6-8 weekend is coming up. Make sure you're informed what's happening in your campus with Micah 6-8. Along with, we have so many great summer programs coming here at Calvary. We would love for you to jump into community. Go to calvarybible.com. Do me who's solid. Go there. Tell me you went there. Say, send me an email. Say, Jay, I went to calvarybible.com. Let me know if you're listening out there in the world. All right, Thomas. Nice polo today. Thank you. Man, don't they make the best <laughs> polos? Uh, they make the most affordable, cheapest polo, no. I think. There's cheaper polos. Are there? there? Yeah. For, I think it's like 28 bucks. No, those are the, those are some of the best polos. <laughs> I put a lot of polos on in my life. <laughs> that one, dude. I just feel like I'm slowly getting to the place where like I don't have a polo body. <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? Oh, bro, I know. I'm you're about like 40. this polo used to look a lot better, <laughs> and I don't think the polo changed. <laughs> Pol- polos are like those like tight fitting uh, workout shirts. <laughs> yeah. Where you're like, it looked great on the mannequin. <laughs> that's six foot eight. Yeah. And Jack. <laughs> yeah, totally. It looks different on me. <sighs> I'm not sure how. <laughs> I can't believe we went there. Already. Anyway, Jay, I wrote you a poem. Oh, gosh. Did you use chat, chat GPT? This is what I wrote you. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you did, didn't you? It says this. Jay Ewing hosts a podcast, It's True. Sipping coffee, he brings on guests to chat and chew. From church to sports and everything in between, he sh- his show is a platform that is very keen. Jay's mug is always filled to the brim with the coffee that gives his brain a vim. His voice is smooth, his style is slick, and he takes a sip, his guests click. What do you think? <laughs> hey, I did a wonderful job. <laughs> <laughs> Why, would, you, would you be disappointed to know that I didn't actually write that? No, I still like it a lot. You still like it, yeah. yeah. If I wrote this in, like, your birthday card, would that be like, oh, man, Thomas wrote me a poem? Yeah, you would actually not stamp my birthday card. <laughs> oh, my gosh. The famous story around here is that... There's a lot of famous stories. <laughs> yeah. Long ago, in many galaxies far, far away, yeah. we used to do birthday cards for all the staff, right? Anytime it was your birthday, we'd pass around a card. I, we, I would imagine many corporate offices today... Have done this. Yes. At one point. Like, we are, we are basically the same as... Tesla <laughs> <laughs> and, and Apple. I guess the staff continue to grow. Yeah, there's a lot of birthday cards. And there's a lot of birthday cards. So Thomas created his own personal stamp <laughs> that said "Happy Birthday, Thomas." Right? No, it was it was a stamp that I gave to my executive oh, yeah, assistant yeah, yeah, that's even and said, "When there's a birthday card that comes, <laughs> will you stamp? Yep, my birthday stamp in their card." Next to everybody else's handwritten note that says, <laughs> happy birthday. You're one of a kind. I hope you feel special. That's Thomas. pretty amazing, Thomas. That's pretty amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I think I, if I were the recipient of that, I would feel yeah. even more loved. That I was like, oh, man, I got I got the birthday stamp. I got the birthday You are special, one of a kind. One That's of a kind. Was. So you got, you got the birthday <laughs> Where is that stamp? Do you still have it? No, I don't know. Where, I don't know. I assume. It's probably in the uh, archives of Calvary Bible Church. It, You know, in the Hall of Fame, there's like the pens. Yeah. A couple yep. bulletins. Yep. There's some A couple ser- sermon series. Tapes. Tapes, yep. Yep, there's some tapes up there. And there's probably the stamp. <laughs> <laughs> People, this is so good. I'm so glad you're listening. I'm right. so glad you're listening today. <laughs> on the podcast, you're really getting a bird's eye view of what actually is talked about. All right, so this is the last line I wrote you. If you want to learn and have some brew, just tune into Jay's podcasts. It's never through. You'll hear about topics you never know. Jay's podcast is where coffee and knowledge are shown. Oh, that's a good. Maybe that should be the intro. 
<laughs> just me reading the poem yeah, to you. <laughs> every week. <laughs> Inspiring us to anyway. Great pontifications upon life. <laughs> hey, that's one of my favorite words, by the way. Pontificating. Yeah. Pontification. Yeah. Pontificating. Yeah, I love that word. Do you? Yeah, I just love I'm gonna it. try to use it today. It's so good. My kids get a lot of that from my car rides to drop them off with me pontificating. <laughs> like, can we just get out of here and get this rule, Dad? Do you have like a word of the day calendar at your house? No, that's that's a great idea. I've actually thought about getting one yeah. and just putting it in my house every morning. Every yeah, everyone gets to see the word of the day. Yeah, so then my kids can learn new words. Yeah. Besides Finna Dipset. <laughs> <laughs> hey, speaking of uh, Finna Dipset, let's get down to the new series, Winsome Living. Man, it's going to be good. You know what? I actually, my life group had a really good conversation about the title of this. Yeah. Okay. Because it's such an old word. Winsome? Yeah. There's whimsical. Yeah. Winsome. Everyone agreed that it was an older word. Really? Like an old person thing? Yeah, totally. Mm. What does it say about us? I don't know. They're like, we're going to find Waldo in the, <laughs> in the, the, the graphic. That's good. It's That's so good. good. But winsome, it's an interesting word. Okay. It, has a, it has a very interesting etymology. Tell yeah. me about it. I don't know the etymology well, no, I mean, of winsome. I mean, y'all, y'all pick the title, so you tell me about Why did you pick <laughs> winsome? <laughs> I didn't pick the title. You picked the title. Oh, why man, why winsome? Um. Well, as I understand the word to mean attractive, charming, pleasant in character, appearance. Like there's something about it that's appealing. Yeah. So the winsome part of Daniel is, is kind of like it, it should catch you off guard because it you shouldn't think winsome and Daniel in the same thought immediately. Yeah. That's what, I think that's why we were talking about it because okay. it's, it's so unusual yeah. for Daniel to be called winsome. Yeah, I bet you most people's series on Daniel are like, Core convictions. Exile. Courage. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the furnace, you yeah, know. Totally. Faithfulness in fur- or, you know, inferno. Yeah, totally. Um, which, you know, those are... Those Aliens are- and strangers. <laughs> <laughs> Alien invasions. <laughs> you that's, like that? That's the playoff of exile. Yeah, totally. Yeah. That, which I did hear a pastor. He said, you know, some people ask me, do I think there are aliens? And I said, well, the Bible talks about them. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's a Bible joke. That's a good Bible nice, joke. Nice, solid. They're like, they're like, Google, where's the <laughs> aliens in the Bible? It's like, you are an alien, oh. an exile of the world. Well, like, when okay, so, okay, old English word. It's an old English word. Okay, what did Google just say? Yeah, and it's joy of some. Joy some. Joy some. Yeah. Okay. That's where, that's like where I was like, and you can, you can break it down to win some. You know, like you win some that, over, and that's where it Yeah, became. that's part of the cleverness of yeah. it, is Daniel lived in such a way that I actually think was clever, in some ways charming and attractive. He's pleasant, or his friends are pleasant, in their protest for many things. Mm-hmm. Like, we're going to get into chapter three with the fiery furnace, and these guys are like, I mean, at least it comes off the text as like so polite, like yeah. annoyingly a polite yeah. response of like, oh, no, we... Yeah, no, we can't do that. We, 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 no, we won't be able to bow down today. Sorry, you know. I mean, it's yeah. it's almost embarrassing. It's like Mister Rogers is trying to. You might want to kill him anyway. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You're, like, you're, you're just, just annoying, annoying now. Yeah, your it, cardigan's it, annoying. <laughs> it could be, uh, but I actually think there are several instances, and we saw the first one in this week, where because of Daniel's response, mm-hmm. somebody's heart is softened towards Daniel, and we're going to actually see a king who changes his heart towards God. And so that's the whimsome is, could you live in such a way that you could win people over to the way you live? So even with Daniel in the lion's den, we think of, man, there's courage. There's, there's, you know, there's confidence. I'm not going to compromise. I'm going to pray. But the, the, the underbelly of that story, and don't worry, no one listening to it will remember this in like four weeks. But how fascinating is it that the king is weeping over Daniel's death. Mm. Like he's so distraught that Daniel would die because he loves Daniel. Yeah. How has Daniel done that? Uh, Daniel just showed up as a slave exile from a conquered city and has now gotten to a place where the king is not eating or sleeping because his friend 
could be put to death, and he's the cause of it. Yep. You're right. like, whoa, that that the Nebuchadnezzar we met in the first scene is just like he woke up in a bad mood and people died. You know, like heads be rolling. Yeah. Because he's he's on he's waking up on the wrong side of the bed, and Daniel has lived in such a way. And I just like, okay, how did he do that? And to me, the word win, winsome yep. kind of encompasses that. It's really good. Probably not perfectly. I'm sure someone. Will help me understand why I was wrong. No, no, I think that's I think that's a wonderful title for it, and I, I think when you name something that doesn't fit our typical expression, it actually has us to pause and say, "Okay, have I missed the point of Daniel?" And to your point, to your credit, to the preaching cohort credit, like I think you're really you're nailing the the head of the nail. Like it really is. Like Daniel is different in yeah. his world. The Chaldeans are really interesting people. Weird people. Yeah. They didn't exist for very long. Well, yeah. Well, they're still enclaves of them. Yeah. There's, the, here's the thing I don't really understand totally, just full disclosure. I don't understand how all of the West Semitic pre-Israelite cultures mm-hmm. kind of ebbed and flowed through Babylon, through the Canaanites, through the Chaldeans, like where it really all begins and where it ends, you know, Mm -hmm. because they're intertwined and they have root beginnings. Right. Yeah, and it takes you probably good Bible reading to understand that through first and second Samuel, first and second Kings, Joshua. I wonder if it begins even before the formation of Israel. Yeah, really. Not do I think. I know it does. With Abraham and his friends. Right, as they just address God as El, yeah, right. Like he's he's El Shaddai. He's God, mm-hmm. and then God becomes known as Yahweh with Moses. Mm-hmm. But many of the West Semitic cultures know him as El, El Shaddai. Yeah, without the Abrahamic covenant, you know. Totally. So anyway, that kind of gets us off somewhere but, else. But yeah, yeah. So the, Bab- the Chaldeans, yeah. which you call the Chaldeans. Did I say Chaldeans? Yeah. Chaldeans. Chaldeans. Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar. Um, I don't know. With Nebuchadnezzar, we got um, these three guys, Daniel and his friends, right? So four, four guys or four which guys? guys? Yeah. Da- three guys and Daniel. Okay, yeah. It, we learn their names in the f- first chapter. Correct. But it's super interesting that throughout the text, it seems like Daniel keeps his Daniel name and they keep their Babylonian name. Mm. Did you see that? In some ways. Well, Daniel's the storyteller. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So he gets to put his name where he would, would like it. Mm-hmm. But he's not He's not addressed by Daniel in his official role. Mm-hmm. Belteshazzar? Belteshazzar, yeah. Is that how you say it? Yeah. There's a website that says how to say Bible names. Yeah, it's super helpful. Or you can listen to ESV <laughs> I don't know. Bible yeah. Reader in the British version of it. Mm. But look, the we bits. have these three names. I've, I, the three names outside of Daniel, who you made a point of telling us why their why they their names change. Why do why do their names change? Well, they're I mean, in part, it's because you're they're trying to indoctrinate a young group of people mm-hmm. to give allegiance to Babylon and their gods. So Daniel and his friends' names are all correlated to the allegiance of God, right? So Daniel's name, God is judge, becomes Belshazzar, which is Bel, protects his life, Bel's prince. So that allegiance shift from God, Yahweh, to Bel, who's the god of Babylon, or the sun god, or sorry, the moon god, um, Aku, or whatever it is for Shadrach. And so you're just switching allegiances. At someone, I can't remember who it was, Tom and John both mentioned it in their messages. It would be like your name being changed from, you know, Jesus is Lord to Satan is is Lord. Mm-hmm. And you're like, well, that, that now says something totally different about you and yeah. says something of like what we want your orientation to be. So really, I mean, there you think about this, when we talked about it on Sunday, but like this is pretty wild that they get new names, they get new dress, so they're just going to change their their style. They're going to get a new job working for the Babylonian government. They're getting new housing, and they're they're be, most likely becoming eunuchs. Mm-hmm. Doesn't say that that they became eunuchs, but they were under the chief eunuch, yeah. and probably anyone who is going to serve in the king's court is going to be come a eunuch. 
which is, you know, genital castration. Yeah. So they're going to remove his gender. Yeah. You know, and you just kind of list some of these things. And they're going to go to this state-sponsored education to read all the books of the Chaldeans. Yeah. Or other known as the Chaldeans. Yeah. So you're like, okay, so they the youth come and they get put into state-sponsored education. Yeah. To read the books of evil, wicked witchcraft and demonic things of child sacrifice. They're going to get new names, new dress, remove their gender. And people are like, how does the Bible relate today? And they're yawning in church. <laughs> you're yeah. Like, uh, you're yeah. like, is this relevant? This book was written a long time ago. You're yeah. like, I don't know. I, I think I just saw a newspaper article. <laughs> totally. And so the question is, how do you remain faithful? Like That's the whole story of, da- of yeah. Daniel, right? Is he actually doesn't take any of those attributes for whatever reason and protest them as though those defiled him. I think they were defiling, Mm -hmm. but it didn't defile him before God, which is remarkable because this one protest that he does have around food and the king's table, which I think is an allegiance thing. um, He says, no, I won't ingest that. And you say, okay, there's something here we need to learn about Daniel where we can say not every battle is worth fighting. Mm -hmm. You don't have, right? Not worth, but not every battle has to be fought in order to remain faithful to God. But some battles are worth fighting to remain faithful to God. Do you know the difference? Are you even, are you even aware of that? Yeah. And then to say, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have strong convictions when I recognize that this will compromise my faithfulness to God. Yeah. It's a beautiful story. I love it because it causes us all to put on our critical thinking hats. Yeah. And that's, I think most people that I talked to on Sunday were, were the most disturbing piece for them was, so where's the line then? Yeah. That's the question you're going to ask. Right. So where, what, what is the thing? Just tell me the thing. And I feel like Christians have done, Christian leaders have done a disservice to Christians in general because they have kept them from thinking through that for themselves. Oh, no doubt. And so, so it's just like, well, here's, here's, I made a list. These books are Christian books. These books are non-Christian books. This is Christian music. Exactly. This is non-Christian music. You can watch these shows and not these shows. You can subscribe to these streaming services, but not those streaming services. These brands, not those brands. And they've been doing it for hundreds of years. Sure. And so I mean, the Catholics like, have been banning movies, <laughs> James Bond movies for a while. Here's time. A, I'm all down for like canceling and banning stuff in my house. Right. You I'll, should. You should have some. There's some garbage, some, man. Yeah, there is some garbage in the world. And there's some garbage that like has a Christian stamp on it. Yeah. That I'm like, I don't want anything to do with. But I told people to their disappointment, well, the one thing we can know for sure is don't eat the food from the king's table. <laughs> <laughs> That's not helpful. Like, That's not helpful. I'm like, I know. And, you know, we'll get to some of these things that are true convictions, but the first step should be, I think there's two things that we should walk away from on Sunday. One, there is a current in our culture. Mm-hmm. Are you even aware of it? And the current flows away from God. That doesn't mean this is a culture war. It means that we're in, we're in it. Yeah. And how do we remain faithful? And here's the thing. The people of God have always been in it. They've always been in it. That's our piece That's, is like, it's not, not new. It's not new, people. Like Christianity worldwide today mm-hmm. and historically has been a minority group in a dominant culture that does not love the things of God. Since the beginning of it. Right. And so you're like, okay, so this is not something new, but I think we've lost sight of how to do it mm-hmm. um, and do it well. So, Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I'm really excited for the series because I think what it's going to do more than anything is challenge every person that shows up to think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, totally. So make sure you get grab a cup of coffee before you get into church. Yeah. And, I mean, if, if you're listening to this and you're going to be coming to one of the campuses on Sunday, I would read chapter two. It's the longest chapter in the Bible. It is such a good story. Mm. It's such a good story. Just read through it, get that in your mind and your heart, and be ready to unpack a couple principles. Yeah. I think the point of chapter one, when we talked about this yesterday, I think it comes down to discernment. We see that Daniel discerns something that is contrary to God. Yeah. And that is where he steps into. Okay, so what what has God given the, the Christian for discernment? Well, he's given the scriptures. Yep. So that's another, I mean, if the weekly could be summed up into all the episodes, we've done 105 now. 105 episodes. Really? Yeah. If we could sum up 105 episodes, I bet 90 of four of them probably have been said somewhere said read your Bible. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. that's just the beginning. 
in the end, in the middle of life, is read your Bible, know your Bible, love your Bible. It helps discern. Like, it helps what, discern. Is that is that of God or is that not of God? Right. My kids ask. It's funny the conversation we've had before, obviously, but my kids this week, we were praying, and they said, "How do you how do you know the voice of God?" I said, "Well, you have to know His Word, and then you'll know which are His, which is His voice and what's not." And they were kind of like, "How does that help?" I said, hey, "Let me tell you something. When we go to one of your sporting events this weekend." And I yell out your name or your coach yells out your name or one of the other moms yells out your name. How do you know it's me? Like, well, I know your voice. I'm like, yeah. So we can all be like hustle, but you know, when I say hustle, because you know, my voice, even though we use the same exact words, like your coach could yell hustle Mm -hmm. and I can yell hustle, but you know, it's me. Mm -hmm. That's what the word of God does. Yeah, that's right. Which informs the Spirit of God, right? So the Spirit of God is what to remind us. Yeah, so the next one is the Spirit of God. Yeah. And that's where the indwelling the Spirit, for all believers, if you've confessed that Jesus is the Lord, you have the Spirit. Yeah. And the Spirit is there to help you discern how to recognize God's voice, how to live into God's voice, and how to trust God's voice. Yeah. Yeah, which is the Bible. (laughs) You know what I mean? And then... And and then the, yeah, and then then you have, I think the third one is the community, mm-hmm. the yep. Christian community, a trusted Christian community. This is not a YouTube, your favorite YouTube channel. Right. It's not a favorite podcast. This is the local expression of Christian community yeah. that is gospel-centered. You're able to say, hey, this is what's going on at work. Yeah. This is the challenge I'm up against. Right. Is this one of those battles? And a Christian community can say, you know, I don't, I don't think it is. No. Yeah. Or, you know what, That's that's probably where... You probably need to take a, a harder stance, and I've done that. Mm-hmm. You know, no. I think th- those are three good things. And the fourth one I would say oh, would is you? internal community that actually really knows you. Believers that really know you—they know your deepest, darkest failures, your sins, your struggles. Mm-hmm. They know how often you read your Bible. They know how often you pray out loud. They know you to help you discern. So there's four there. I, you know, let me highlight. Would you? Would you also say just the human conscience? Yeah, like God gave us a. Every human has a conscience. It's oh, like the worst thing you can do is sin against your conscience. Totally, no doubt, no doubt. That is the common grace of yeah. God, for sure. And in fact, you know, I'll, I'll say this: there is no way I made the choices I made in high school and stayed away from the things because I wasn't a believer at the time. But outside of God's just kindness for common mm-hmm. grace in my life, that is new. I sniffed it out, even though I didn't know God. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, totally. So one thing I would, I would share with people is not only are those four or five, whatever we want to call them, um, ways to discern mm-hmm. God's desires, God's ways, um, discern when you're in the current and when it's time to stand up, but they're also the same ways that give you the encouragement and strength oh, to do it. Totally. And you just think, gosh, the amount of mental anguish that Daniel must be in to, to do this, the, even especially the first time, like I'm going to go stand up against what seems to be like this entire empire against me for the faithfulness of God. That courage, that strength, that mental fortitude, the encouragement and comfort has to come from somewhere too. Yeah. And that those com- that comes from those same things is God, what's God's promises that you're standing on the, the spirit. Like he's the counselor of God, mm-hmm. right? Then you think of the community that stands with you just the general community than the specific community. I think that is where we have to have to understand, like, this is it's not easy. This is actually not easy. Yeah. And you can't do it alone. And Daniel had all those yeah. within his community. So anyone who's, who looks at it and goes, man, this seems so daunting, I would ask you, like, okay, where are you in God's Word? Mm-hmm. Where are you listening to the Spirit of God? Mm-hmm. Where are you in Christian community? And who is supporting and standing with you? Mm-hmm. And if you don't have those things, and you just feel like a, a, a bit frazzled right now, and vulnerable, put some of those pieces in place. Yep. And, you know, find a local church, be involved in it, make that local church as small as possible. Mm-hmm. People know you because it's not going to be easy. Yeah. And faithfulness really matters. Faithfulness really matters. But this week, we're going to look at chapter two with this in mind is this is really challenging. And you need to have hope mm. that what you're doing is done for the right reason. And so where does that hope come from? Like, what is the object of hope that will get you through this? And we're going to unpack that on Sunday. And you just, you dumped some awesome Bible trivia. What's one, what's the longest chapter in the Bible? 
You said in, it was, in the Bible. Yeah, I said it was in Daniel. And as long as chapter in Daniel, yeah. chapter two, chapter two. That's so cool. It's a long one. That's a very long one. I just love how 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 long ago was Daniel written? So the the final exile is five eighty six when he, when everyone's taken. So somewhere between five eighty six and five. 40, 30s, if you take a traditional view of BC before Christ. Yes. That is a long time ago that we are peering yeah. into a man's story. And it's so relevant <laughs> to today. It's amazing. Yeah. I love God's scriptures for that. Absolutely. All right, Calvary, we're so thankful that you're listening always to the weekly. Thomas, thanks for this solid time this morning. Talk about Daniel 1. Super thankful for you. Thankful for Tom and John and Zach and Perry and all the great pastors that preach here at Calvary. You guys, this is is so cool. I can't believe you get to do what you get to do. Also, read chapter two of Daniel this week. Find some time. Read it, and I would encourage you to listen to it. Read it once, listen to it once, and get ready for a great another week here at Calvary. Like always, go to CalvaryBible.com. Let us know what's going on in your life. We would love to pray for you. You can always fit Fill out a prayer request at calvarybible.com. And above and beyond, have a great week.